Yo, what up guys? It's Tuna. I just wanted to make a quick video talking about inscribed ultimatums and um, what I've, you know, what I think about them now that we've been grinding them for about two days. Um, yeah, I just want to talk about like the mechanic itself. What's good about the mechanic? What's bad about the mechanic? So the main thing that I really, really enjoy about the mechanic is that, um, well, you can essentially create wealth out of risk, right? So essentially you are rewarded for risking, um, you know, whether it's currency or an item to get more out of that specific item. So, uh, there's various examples to this, but it doesn't apply to every single ultimatum, but the easiest example to use would be you put in eight exalt into the window, you run the ultimatum, you have a high risk of, uh, failing it and then you get eight exalts. So you're basically doubling your exalts um, because of the risk. I think that is a very, very, very fun aspect to this whole ultimatum thing. Every time we risk something big, uh, we feel, we feel, you know, we feel the blood rushing, we feel the dopamine and things like that. And when, when we finish it, it's very, very, very exciting um, when we get that. As you can see in the background here, there's some video of us duplicating a bow, which, uh, yep is uh was very exciting and um <clears throat> yeah so that's one really good thing that i like about the ultimatums themselves um now to balance that out i would like to say one thing i don't like about them it is very very hard for players to actually um value these ultimatums right so um, for example you drop one most of the time you will drop things that you don't even know what what it's about so like you will drop one that doubles the divination card, but it'll say something along the lines of the immortal or what is it? Pride of the first ones or sucker of whatever for the sucker of sinless, you know? And like, and so then you have to go into either POE Ninja or you have to go into, um, you know, uh, the trade to see how many cards, uh, how much those cards cost. Uh, you have to then value your ultimatum at a specific amount so that people actually would want to buy it since they're putting in the risk and um yeah all that sort of stuff so essentially what that what happens because of that is um it's very very hard to find ultimatums i think most people are not even willing to price them in the first place and are also not willing to run them because the risk of them is pretty high there's some modifiers on these ultimatums which are pretty rippy um you know, like, um, treacherous auras means that, like, your auras apply to the enemies as well can be pretty dangerous. There's also ones that make you have only one flask, so you have to pre-plan which flask you're going to be using throughout that encounter. Or the worst of them all is, um, uh, the default loss ruin. And specifically stalking ruin. Because stalking ruin, um, stalking ruin essentially means that, like, there's these little ghosts that follow you around, and if they hit you a certain amount, you're just gonna fail, regardless. So, uh, that means that you always need to be running around and uh, making sure that you're not getting the stalking ruin debuff and doing that sort of stuff. So, yeah, it's it can be quite scary when you get those mods, especially as a solo player, and especially when it overlaps with um, stone circles, right? So, stone circles, stalking ruin, those encounters are gonna take five to ten minutes to run because you're gonna be running around from circle to circle. Making sure that, um, you know, making sure that you don't get any ruin stacks and that you're only staying in one circle for a certain amount of time. So, yeah. Um, however, I think that the mechanic is actually extremely fun, right? I think it's a very, very fun mechanic. I think it's one of the best they've done. Um, because of this risk reward, this soft, hardcore approach to an end game mechanic, right? Like if you fail the ultimatum, you know, you screw up essentially 400 exalts, as you can see here on the screen, uh, which I like, I like that about it. I like, I like the whole risk reward aspect to the mechanic. Um, yeah, I've already talked about what I don't, don't like about them and we can go in depth here. So I've made some searches for everything that I uh, deem worthy, uh, ultimatum wise. So there will be like Ruslata's coils, you know, trading in for a poet's pen. Um, so that's a search there that I have. Then I have void battery for assonance, gentle touch, things like that. 
So you can see that like Asin's gentle touch is um if we search that on POE Ninja, unique armors. Asinance gentle touch. So they sell for 4.8x, right? 4.85x, I would say. Yeah. And so you can buy this for 4x and you can make like 1x profit, which is pretty good, right? It's really good. Uh, but you are putting a lot at risk. Uh, in this case, you're only really putting the price of the ultimatum at risk. So 4 exults, because void batteries are really, really cheap. So, yeah. But that is all things that you need to be considering. Another one here is a double doctors. And uh, for 55x, this is seven days ago. So actually, they, they cost a lot more than this, generally. The people selling them at like 70, right? Which is kind of ridiculous when you consider that you are putting not only 70 exults at risk, for buying the ultimatum and running it, but you're also putting another extra 70 exalts at risk because of the four doctors that you have to put in. Um, so in a lot of cases, it does not make sense to run these unless you have a high margin. And the more expensive uh, the reward is and the more the more money you have to put in, the more you expect to get back because server instability is a thing, unfortunately. You can lose to a crash. So yeah, and regardless of how good your characters are. Also this one, the Immortal, which gives you uh, mirror shards is also pretty good. This guy's price fixing though. We've tried to whisper him for two days now and yeah You can see that it's like it's incredibly rare, right? There's only like one result for this one result for that It's both incredibly rare and in high demand. So if you want to get into this market, it's it's pretty difficult uh, Where is this one like headhunter? Um, these are actually quite worth to run Abrat's hoofs for a headhunter for 124 exalts when a headhunter itself is actually 140 exalts, right? So those are worth it to buy and run if you are willing to risk 125 exalts, right? For the base item, the ultimatum. That is the caveat right there. And then here, Sucker of Sinless, which uh, I talked about earlier. This is for a, um, a Bottled Faith. Bottled Faith is 12 exalts right now. You put in three cards, those will cost you 6x. And then you buy the thing. So it, it's 12x for the, for the flask, right? And um, you're putting in 6x. And this guy's selling it for 6x. So that does not make any sense. Does not make any sense. Which is why he's had it up for three days and nobody's bought it, right? I offered this guy 5 exalts last night and he was like, no. And it's like, uh, brother, I'm putting, I'm putting like 11x at risk to make 1x. Like, come on. You know? So yeah, give the Assonance. This is a Assonance Gentle Touch. You're putting in three diff cards uh, to get it, uh, Assonance Gentle Touch. So yeah. Then you got Pride of the First Ones. This is for a Feral's Fur. Unironically, this is one of the ones that gives you the most margin. Uh, since uh, it gives you four cards. I think Pride of the First One is a seven set. Uh, let us see here. So let's see. Uh, yeah, it's a seven set. So essentially, um, you're getting one extra card out of it. So it's also hard to like estimate the... Um, the margins for these so let's say two cards is one x uh and you're putting in four cards so you're essentially almost doubling your money by running these uh which is good the margins are quite low because they're cheap and then this search i don't know exactly what that is uh desecrated virtue which was des uh, uh sorry about that the desecrated virtue was oh yeah uh level six awakened gem so these are actually also worth to run when they pop up. Um, and then we got a natural instinct, which is one of the easiest ones to run. It'll cost like seven X. You sell a natural instinct for seven and a half X uh, and you put like generally a pretty bad jewel in. So Samurai's Eye, um, these ones, you actually want to do them, but not, uh, not ID the Watcher's Eye. So you just do them and then you sell the divination cards for people that want to gamble and things like that right and then alluring bounty this is just a standard exalt uh, divination card which it's really easy to calculate the, um, the margins for these so yeah but um i'm gonna put all these trade links in the description so that you can look these up as well if you're interested in running these um you need to be careful because they're you know you could lose a lot of currency doing this so pre-plan um i would I would suggest you run like a lot of like bad ones first. So like 30 scours, 10 alchemies, things like that to test your build. See if you can handle it. Uh, lose some XP. 
lose some items maybe in the process try to learn the mechanics of the of these ultimatums try to test all these different mechanics as well like choking my eyes must talking ruin things like that just have a go you know you, you, when you're doing low low investment ones like alchemy orbs i bet you have a lot of them in your um in your stash as well like you're not gonna lose anything from doing that so yeah have a go at it play the game have fun and i hope this video helped a little bit again i will put all these trade links in a little document for you guys uh, so you can so you can search these up and um yeah i hope you have a good day i appreciate you all thanks for watching see you later boys